Welcome again right now at Hebrews chapter 2. Therefore, we ought to pay greater attention to the things that were heard, lest perhaps we drift away. For if the words spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just penalty, obviously this is talking about the law that was given through Moses. Now, why does it say through angels? This here is another allusion to the apocryphal book of Jubilees. The whole book of Jubilees talks about how Moses received the law through angels. So once again, here is another reference to the Apocrypha in the book of Hebrews. And every transgression and disobedience received a just penalty. How will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first, having been spoken through the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard? God also testifying with them, both by signs and wonders, by various works of power, and by gifts of the Spirit, according to his own will. Very serious statement here. If the law that was given to Moses through angels was punished so harshly, how much more this word that we got through the Lord himself, this principle that the violators of the law through the New Testament incurs much more wrath and judgment than the violators of the law through the Old Testament is also echoed in chapter 10. We will get to that a little bit later. For he didn't subject the world to come, of which we speak, to angels. But one has somewhere testified, saying, What is man that you think of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the angels, you crowned him with glory and honor. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. And that is found in Psalm 8, verses 4 to 6. For in that he subjected all things to him. He left nothing that is not subject to him. But now we don't yet see all things subjected to him. But we see him who has been made a little lower than the angels, Jesus, because of the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, that by the grace of God he should taste of death for everyone. For it became him, for whom are all things, and through whom are all things, in bringing many children to glory, to make the author of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified are all from one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will declare your name to my brothers, among the congregation I will sing your praise. And that is found in Psalm 22, verse 22. Again, I will put my trust in him. Again, behold, here I am with the children whom God has given me. And that is found in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Since then the children shared in flesh and blood. He also himself in the same way partook of the same, that through death he might bring to nothing him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and might deliver all of them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For most certainly he doesn't give help to angels, but he gives help to the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he was obligated in all things to be made like his brothers, that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make atonement for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to help those who are tempted. Seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. If you seek him with all your heart. I'm talking about more than just saying you believe in God, that you believe in Jesus, and more than just opening the Bible every once in a while and reading it. I'm talking about seeking the Lord with all your heart. Reading the scriptures and doing it regardless of how you feel, regardless of your opinions. If you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.